This video is sponsored by Skillshare. A few months ago, I lamented about how inferior trees make me feel. Their beauty is just overwhelming. My one saving grace is that during the winter time, trees shed their extravagant trimmings and give way to scraggly branches, similar to the way I do in the winter time, giving me the opportunity to feel slightly better about myself for three to four months. But wait. Evergreens, pine trees, the one specimen in my outdoor menagerie that refuses to give it a rest. As a pile of leaves that crumples and dies during the cold months, I am particularly threatened by a tree that doesn't buckle under the cold weight of winter. And thusly, I'm left with only one option. Identity theft. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. So in all seriousness, over the past year or so, I have been doing a lot of dresses and designs inspired by both fruit and just nature in general. Made a dress that just looks like a bunch of autumn leaves. Made a bodice that looks like strawberries. Made a dress that looks like a pumpkin. And most recently, I made a corset that just looks like a tree trunk. It's one of my favorite things I've ever made, and I absolutely love it. But I made that corset, and like, I have plenty of things that I could wear under it. It turns out tree trunks are very versatile, so I can wear all of the outfits that I already have that match this piece, or I could take inspiration from trees again and make a pine tree dress. So what I'm thinking in terms of design is a full-length bustier dress with puffy off-the-shoulder sleeves and a tiered skirt. I want the pine tree look to mainly come through in the skirt, so I want to make it have three disconnected tiers with ruffled trim all around, and a similar tiered look for the sleeves, and a relatively simple boned bodice. Plus a corseted back closure so that I don't have to sew on a zipper, and I also decided to make the bodice sleeves and skirt as separate so they're easier to sew and more versatile for my wardrobe. A lot of times designs like this just come to me, I'm out on a walk or relaxing in nature and I see something and think, I should create a design based on that. But sometimes that inspiration can be a little difficult to find, especially if you've been stuck in an art block for a little while. Which is why recently I've been checking out Danielle Chris's class, Creative Breakthrough, Eight Exercises to Power Your Creativity, Confidence, and Career, which is available through this video sponsor, Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing, or illustration, but Skillshare also has hundreds of career focus classes and classes that can help you hone your artistic identity so that you can confidently create on a regular basis. Getting the ball rolling with creating can be really intimidating, especially whenever there's fear of failure or we're feeling art block. But you can take the pressure off by starting small. Maybe you want to learn productivity tips so that you have more me time. Maybe you want to get into the habit of drawing in your sketchbook every day. Or maybe you want to create a personal brand style. Regardless, Skillshare teachers can walk you through the process step by step. Staying creative all the time is definitely one of the challenges to art being my job. But in Danielle's class, she offers lots of exercises to combat creative blocks and find long-term inspiration, especially when our creativity has been discouraged by others. She talks a lot about getting in touch with and healing your inner child, embracing your weirdness, and reclaiming experiences when we're faced with opposition to our work. Her very intentional doodle exercises help me to start diving into who I am as a creator and what inspires me. One of my favorite exercises was creating an art bible, which is really helpful for recognizing repeating themes in your work. So that is sort of what I started doing on the first two pages of my sketchbook, just like doodling a bunch of different things that are meaningful to me, listing things off like she said, lodging, uh, free panties with any purchase. I wouldn't say that's super influential to who I am as an artist, um, but the color red is. I just absolutely love very physical, tactile, messy art like this that has a lot of identity to it. Traditional jobs are not a one size fits all, and as it happens, neither are creative jobs actually. But Skillshare can help you to build tools to sustain your creative drive and design a career that fits you. So if you would like to grow in your creative and career skills in 2023, you can do so on Skillshare for free. Because the first 1,000 people to join using the link in my description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's attempts to turn myself into a tree. Again, now let's get started. Hi, I'm not sitting in a chair because there's like pollen everywhere and gross. Okay, so usual first step pattern making with me. However, we're not doing that this week, at least not for the bodice part because as you guys saw in the design, I'm once again trying to make a bustier, but my track record with bustiers is 
tumultuous to say the least. I keep trying to make them and then they just don't work out and I just, I don't feel like doing it this week. So this week I have bought a pattern from Daria Pattern Making. I will have their social medias and stuff here. And I just hope that this fits me because the last time I bought a pattern off the internet, it did not fit me. My back is like wide. So normally whenever I download patterns, they just, they don't fit, but. We're doing a corseted closure on this. So hopefully it won't matter. I, I don't know. Anyways, I need to cut this out and then make a mock-up to make sure that it does sort of kind of fit. And I don't have that long to do that because I have like two hours or something like that before I go shopping with the boys. Very serious stuff. So let's attend to this. Okay, so good news is I finished the mock-up and it fits. Um, the bad news is bustiers still continue to be my nemesis even whenever I'm not the one who patterns them. This fabric is absolutely terrible and I may have like accidentally scrunched some of this cup into the seam whenever I sewed it, but that's fine. This one fits really well and I have a little bit of space in the back for me to fold in so that I can do like a lace closure. So I think we're good to go and begin cutting out actual fabric now. The only issue there is I have quite the variety of fabric that I bought for this project. Mostly because whenever I went to the thrift store and had the idea to make this dress, I was like, I have to immediately make this now. No waiting, no research. I need it now. I basically bought up all the green fabric that they have. Some of them match, some of them don't. But in my mind, I was like, you know what? Isn't that just trees in general? So if I'm going to make a tree dress, I might as well make a tree dress that actually emulates nature and isn't matching. At least that's my excuse for having fabric that doesn't really go together. However, the main event is going to be this sort of organza stuff. This is like the perfect pine tree green. I don't know exactly how much I have, but as you can see, I do have a lot of it. So I'm generally thinking we definitely use this for the puffy sleeves, and then also for a couple of tiers on the skirt, and then maybe some parts of the bodice, depending on what I want it to look like. Um, I haven't exactly designed this dress as of right now. I will fix that as soon as my iPad charges. My iPad charged. So this is how I decided to use my fabrics. I used this pattern green fabric for the main part of the bodice, and this more saturated green for the cups, with a layer of organza covering all of that, then this fabric for the lining, and all organza for the sleeves. You keeping up? Good. For the skirt, we use a layer of this pattern green, a longer layer of printed green, and an even longer layer that's just this tablecloth with a hole cut in the middle. Each layer of that gets trim on the bottom made from this green, and all of that gets covered in hunter green organza. Wow, all of this sounds super simple and will definitely only take me three days. That is the loose idea, but I need to get to work, so let's cut out the bodice and get the base layer sewn up. So, super fun thing, I got pretty much all the way through cutting like the torso part of the bodice and then realized I forgot about grain lines. Mildly important for something like this, so we're recutting the outside of the bodice. Great, great, love that. Okay, now that we have the outer pieces cut out, now we can cut out the lining. I am cutting the lining out of this fabric. Let's do it. You're being such a good helper today. cut out, I have bodice cut out, I have all lining layers and this organza layer and all that stuff. I know that might not seem like a lot of progress, but I'm really trying to challenge myself this week to make something good. Let's get into actually assembling the bodice. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, so I lied. Apparently we're doing sleeves first. I have no idea why I started with these since I normally do sleeves last. I guess I was just feeling intimidated and needed a win. So first I just measured the circumference of my wrist and bicep and cut my four pieces of elastic to length. I then began sewing the elastic on, but we outright had a little bit of an issue. Okay, hi. Small slash large change of plans. I had the sleeves almost assembled. I had all the ruffles on. I have my gathers at the bottom, but the layers that I added are just a little bit too narrow. Probably need to be twice this long to actually pleat up and create the effect that I'm going for. So I had to cut them off and we're going for like plan B here. I've cut a new strip. This is like 35.5 inches per sleeve. It needs to be more like 44 inches, but I just didn't have enough fabric for that. I am just gonna make this work because it should be better than nothing. It should give me somewhat of a pleated effect without making it like too pronounced. I just need a little bit. I don't need a ton because I think that's gonna be like a little bit goofy anyways. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So let's do all those steps again. So I did a lot of hemming, it's almost foreshadowing for later in the video, and then attached my floofs to the main sleeve and quickly and easily gathered the top and bottom of the sleeves to my strips of elastic. You know, the way it should have gone the first time around. I then finished them off with a quick French seam. You know the drill, wrong sides together, so cut excess, flip, right sides together, flip again, pause to appreciate cat, and then it makes it look like I know what I'm doing. Love a good French seam. Okay, this is what the sleeves are looking like. They are done, they stay up, they're functional, and they are <laughs> certainly a design choice. They feel like very foresty and fey, which is definitely the look we're going for here, and I think they read as pine tree, especially with the rest of the dress, so. And I love having detachable sleeves like this, like the ones that I made for my Valentine's dress I've actually been wearing like with other outfits and just casually around. They are actually like super versatile. They were a pain in my keister, but I actually adore how these came out. I am going to bed now, so I will see you guys tomorrow so that we can try to get the bodice done. Hello there, and good morning. <laughs> hey little baby. Could we get a quote? Okay, so on the itinerary for today, we have the bodice. I'm basically gonna try to get it done. A little skeptical of that, just because I struggle historically so much with boosties, so it's a little up in the air, but that's the goal at least. Other thing on the itinerary for today, crying. The season finale of The Last of Us came out last night. We usually watch it Monday nights. I know it happens because I've seen all of the gameplay at this point and I'm not ready. You also have that to look forward to in this video. All right, let's get started on that bodice. I'm not stalling. Okay, so I kind of made a mistake in cutting it and didn't cut the very center panel on the fold, but that's okay because in my design, I want to put a bone here anyways. So I'm trying something a little bit different so that I can actually insert a boning channel down here. I'm going to try like an overlocking seam where I iron this in and I iron this in and then they sort of overlap together and then sew it down both sides and then I can stick a boning channel down there. I'm also going to bone all the other seams, but the reason why I'm not doing like a normal seam is whenever you have a seam down the center, I'm going to put one of the bones like off to either side on these. But with the center seam, it won't be symmetrical if I do that. So I have to do an overlock so that it can actually be down the center of this panel. It's a little bit uneven at the top, but that's okay because I'm gonna top stitch the cups on anyways. Okay, now it's time for the lining. So 
So after I gave all the seams on the outer and lining layers of the bodice a good press, it was time to sew those babies up. So I pinned the top edge of both right sides together and sewed all the way along that seam. And I did so with great care and attention as to not upset the sewing gods. I already broke an iron and refused to do mock-ups most of the time. I can't afford a third strike. Okay, outer and lining layers are now attached and it's looking like actually smooth for once. I'm actually like super pleased with how this is coming out. The center is a little off as you can see, so that sucks, but that's my fault. This wasn't gonna be perfect, but it's looking pretty good. So I did watch Daria Pattern Making's video on just the bodice part and I implemented some of the professional special sewing things that you're supposed to do that I quite frankly didn't know about until now. Inside when you attach these, you're supposed to snip this inner corner so that it can actually like poke out and be square. So I did that. The other thing I did was cut notches into the bottom edge of the cup about every quarter inch or so just to relieve that tension, which when you flip it inside out allows it to actually make a smooth curve and not be all like bunched up near the bottom here. And the last thing I did was sew the top edge of the lining here, just the tiniest, like it's not even an eighth of an inch down to the seam allowance so that it folds over and it stays crisp and you can't see it from the outside, which I should have been doing ages ago because I have a huge problem with my linings showing through to the other side, but it's not happening here because I, I know what to do now. So that's great. Um, so the other thing I did real quick was just make some foam cups using the same pattern. I kind of Frankenstein these out of some old foam cups that I took out of sports bras because screw those. And I didn't record it because this entire process just made me nervous and I was trying the entire time not to screw up. But to get a nice fit on these, all I did was cut out the pattern pieces without the seam allowance, leaving a little bit of seam allowance on the bottom. And then I just top stitched it together with a zigzag stitch and Bob's your uncle, some very funny looking foam cups that are multi colored, but that doesn't matter because we're about to cover them up. So next, before I go and finish up the cups and attach them to bodice, I'm going to add some zip tie boning. My go-to method for adding boning is to pin the seams of the outer and lining layers together and then top stitch over every seam, then move my presser fit over to the outside a little wider than the bones I'm using. This time I'm using zip ties and top stitch a straight line all along that seam. It's super quick and easy and from there I can just cut my zip ties to length and slip them in. In this case, I used two ties per channel for a little bit more structure and after that, my bodice was looking smooth and professional, minus a few mistakes. Please don't look at that. I, I said don't look at it. Hello, so we have a fully blown bodice now and I'm very happy with how it's coming out. The inside lining is like a little bit messy, but it's the inside, so we don't have to look at that. Just look at this. So now to finish this up, we get to the part that is kind of the actual challenging part for me, and that's finishing up and attaching the cups. I think it's going well with them so far, but I am a little bit confused about how to attach them to the foam inserts I made and then how to attach that on here. So um, yeah, I gotta figure that out. To begin doing that, I stitched the cup linings to the inside of the foam, and to make sure everything was as clean as possible, I pinned the outer layer right sides together so that I could flip it down over the front and stitch that down. Then I gave those top seams a good press, and finished the bottom seams with some homemade bias tape so the cups would look nice and clean from the inside. I then pinned the cups onto the outside of the bodice, hiding the bias tape, like so. And then I top stitched them on, which looked like this, and I was one happy little disaster seamstress. Hello, hello! The bodice is for the most part done, and right now I'm tasting both victory and defeat because on one hand, whenever I sewed the cups onto the actual bodice the way the seam bunched, I just don't like it. It's serving unprofessional and that's not really the vibe. I was trying to make this cleaner and it just didn't work out. That's kind of one of the two things that I don't like about how this is coming out. The other thing being, of course, the fact that I completely miffed the center panel and it just looks like dog. However, I do have a possible fix for that. I might just put like a little bow here just to ignore my problem. We'll see. It doesn't look that bad without it. It's just I know it's there, which infuriates me. But you know what? We're mostly tasting victory because I tried it on and I kind of love it. It's turning out good, especially compared to my past adventures in making bustiers. This is at least on the right track. Big surprise. I'm not using my own pattern. That's why this looks good. Anyways, the bodice is mostly done. I just have to add some grommet closures in the back, maybe a little bit of structure, but I have to do that after after I do the skirt anyways, which means... Oh my God, okay, it's happening. But now it is time to watch The Last of Us 
and cry. You guys excited to cry? Look who else is excited to cry. That's right. You know what time it is. It's time for this week's unsolicited review of The Last of Us. It's been several weeks since we've last spoken and a lot has happened. Or at least that's what I thought I was going to say because I released this video out of order and reviewed the final three episodes on Friday. Sorry. You didn't think I was gonna forget about episodes 5 and 6, did you? This is actually convenient for me because I get to gloss over some events that I just don't want to talk about. Episode 5, uh, we met some fine folks and nothing bad happened to them and they just went on their merry way. That's canon now, you hear me? Henry is a sunshine brother, he has the sweetest relationship with Sam, and making Sam death was such an interesting change from the game, I think it really made for a more interesting dynamic, especially between Ellie and Sam. They are so cute. It's also cool that they aged Sam down too because now Ellie has someone she wants to protect, it kind of makes you think if Sam was in Ellie's place at the end of this story and Ellie was faced with the trolley problem, are you telling me she wouldn't make the same choice Joel made? I'm just putting that out there. Also, the action in this episode took my socks and just knocked them right off my feet. Rude. This? Oh, that is terrifying. This gave me nightmares. This was kind of funny. And screw Kathleen, we love some poetic justice. I think episode five might be both my favorite and most hated episode because I loved Henry and Sam. So, <clears throat> jail. But now, winter is coming, my boys. The mood needed to be lightened, so we start off with a little father-daughter banter and some stand-up comedy from these two. Can we bring these two back for season two or something? Because, well, they're just great. But more importantly, we got our first dog! Pet the dog. Pet the duck. Oh, he pet the dog! We get to see Jackson for the first time, which is really cool. It is that, literally. This is the commune. We're communists. And Joel and Tommy's reunion was so sweet. Well, mostly. I know a lot of people consider this a slower episode, but I loved it. Joel's monologue had me in a puddle of my own tears. I loved the depth they brought to this character in the show. And I thought the scene was played out really well, even though it was mostly beat for beat from the game. Although I did miss... Ellie! And you are treading on some mighty thin ice here. But after some light confrontation, we were off to the university. And Joel plays some baseball with a random raider and loses. Gosh, I hate it when they pull out the shiv in TV shows. Sir, you are going to die. At least in the game, it's like rebar sticking out of the ground and you kind of have to get him off of that. So yeah, Joel topples off the horse and Craig Mason's daughter makes us all cry again. <sighs> it's beautiful. Anyway, love the season. If you want to see my thoughts on the finale, watch this video. Also, just watch it because it's a good video. Anyways, you will not likely see me in work mode again tonight because I have other things to do. So I will see you all tomorrow to work and hopefully finish the skirt and hopefully finish up this entire dress. That's the schedule that I've put myself on. Making a dress in three days is a really good idea. Have you ever tried it? Howdy, it's the final night. It's skirt night and I'm super tired. So let's just get this done. Okay, so the entire plan for this skirt is just three circle skirts stacked on top of each other. Okay, so how many times have y'all seen me make a circle skirt? It's practically the only skirt I do make because it's so easy. Also, you can't deny that swoosh factor. You know the drill. First we measure, you get the length measurement and the waist measurement, then pie happens, and the biggest challenge of drafting this skirt is all the added pressure from corporate. So once you cut, 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 the first layer is unlocked. Okay, next layer. It's only slightly longer than the first one and somehow I still messed up the placement like three times. Well, we figured it out. For the final layer, I just cut a hole in the middle of a big tablecloth that was the perfect length, so it was super easy, or would have been, had it not been for the intervention of the I executive producer. That. You're being so uh, bad right now. Yeah. had it all nicely folded. How the could you? No! <laughs> ah, you're being so chaotic! That's some feral behavior, baby girl. Please stop. I didn't raise a feral daughter. You're domesticated! What are you doing? You're supposed to be domesticated. <laughs> What we're not gonna do is get all over mommy's fabric. Anyways, I finally got that figured out. All that just to cut a circle. Wow. But with that, my base for the skirt was all cut out. Okay, I'm so excited. It looks so cute already and I haven't even cut out the organza ruffles that are gonna go on it. It's just so cool and fluffy. I'm, I'm so excited. This is gonna take me literally all night to sew together probably and I'm gonna hate it, but I, I don't know, man. I, I kind of think it's worth it. <sighs> Just wanna look like a pine tree.
let's keep going. All right, babes, now it's time for some maps. Next, I needed to cut out all of the ruffles. So to do that, I needed to know the circumference of each circle. So I took the diameter of each circle, including the waist measurement, multiplied that by pi to get the circumference. And I wanted plenty of poof. So I multiplied the circumference by 2.5 to get a full length of each ruffled tier, which turned out being a lot of yards of fabric. Like I didn't think I even had that much fabric. Even so, I spent the rest of the night measuring and cutting out while probably watching Breaking Bad and taking a lot of snack breaks. I also attempted to do a bit of gathering, which sucks. You know, whoever invented ruffles. Yeah, so this is where we are. So much cutting, so much gathering, and we're probably only about like halfway done. Anyways, it's taking four days and I will see you guys tomorrow. Hey, what's up? How's it going, everybody? It is the final day, and it has to be the final day because I have contractual obligation. Cool, cool, cool. So I did a whole bunch off camera last night because I was frazzled and frankly bamboozled, and I just really needed to figure out what I was doing before I could dive in and properly explain it. The ruffle length on the first shortest skirt is 13 feet. The middle skirt is 17 feet, and the ruffles on the largest, longest skirt are 22 feet long. That's why this is going to take me a million years. And because I am just a genius dude, I'm not just adding ruffles in organza because I think that would be a little bit too light of a fabric. I think it needs a little bit more weight on the bottom. We need, you know, like optimum swoosh. I'm also adding ruffles on the bottom in a different fabric and the organza. So that is effectively doubled everything that I have to do on here. Nice. <laughs> um, not to mention all of the hems that I am going to have to do. I managed to cut most of the longest pieces of the fabric so that the hem from the fabric that I, that I cut it from is the hem. I don't have to hem it anymore, but I think I have just come to the end of the fabric I have that's already hemmed. So that's the other cool thing we get to do today. We get to hem about... Yeah, 38 feet of fabric. <laughs> we love making things. We love getting creative ideas and making them impulsively. Okay, I don't have a lot of time, so let's do this. Okay, so this day was pretty sporadic to say the least. I kind of just winged it on this skirt. It was my first time doing something like this and I didn't exactly have a clear process laid out in my head, so I didn't film as much as I probably should have, but we'll manage. I began by cutting out the rest of the ruffles for all three skirt tiers, and then I pressed all of that fabric, all of that fabric. <sighs> so much fabric. I also ironed down the edges and hemmed all of the sections of organza, which took a while. I never want to look at another iron again, so long as I live. So then I was on to gathering, which like I said, sucks, man. It sucks. I hate it. But we emerged victorious and eventually I was on to assembling the skirts. The top skirt had an organza layer as well, so I sewed the ruffles onto that and then gathered the solid ruffles onto the solid skirt and sewed them on off camera. I did the same with the middle skirt. I gathered the solid and organza ruffles down, pinned and sewed them on somewhat off camera. <laughs> and after a few brief moments of defeat and confusing my family members, I did the same for the largest skirt, which extra sucked because I sewed somehow managed to miscalculate both sets of ruffles for it. I don't know how I managed to do this because the other two were fine, but after a lot of finessing and adding another section to my organza ruffles, I managed to get them all pinned into place and gosh darn it, it looks good! So I sewed all of that up and then we had our skirt layers. And always except physical, I am a tree. Howdy, what's up? It's day five. There's a fifth day of this, apparently. I spent the entire day yesterday working on that skirt. I think it finally clocked out to about 13 hours. <laughs> That's cool, it's great. Took way longer than I thought it would, mostly because my gathering stitches kept breaking and I had to keep redoing them. So it's what I get for using polyester thread. Anyways, today we just have a couple of closures to work on. I think I'm gonna do the bodice and the skirt as separates because the skirt is so heavy. I don't want that much strain on the bodice. I also think that might make things slightly easier for me. So let's get to it, get it done. I'm so ready to be done with this. So this is where we are with the skirt. And it is a lot of skirt. I think this needs a waistband. Let's make one. To make a waistband, I just drafted out some canvas as a base. It's about 1.5 inches wide and a few inches longer than my waist. Wider than my waist? You get it. I then cut some green floral fabric to cover that and pressed down all the edges so everything would be nice and crisp when gathering the skirt. I then made a skirt sandwich and pinned the top of my skirt between the folds of the waistband, which looked a little something like this. And I sewed that down as cleanly and delicately as possible as to please the sewing goblins dictating my every move just off screen. It also needed a closure, so I marked the size of the button 
I wanted to use, and zigzag stitched a buttonhole on because I couldn't find my buttonhole foot. I don't know, maybe those sewing goblins took it. You never know what they're up to. I then hand stitched said button to the other side, and oh, yay, it worked. I also French seamed all the back edges closed, but that's boring and I don't feel like going into it. I did leave a bit of extra space so I can get it over my hips, and I attached some loops to the back so that I can lace up that extra space. And bada bing, bada boom, there's a finished skirt. What does bada bing bada boom even mean? It just feels like 1920s mobster dribble. It's like toddler babble, but for suspicious Italians. Right, I also finished the bottom edge of that bodice. I put some canvas pieces on either side for structure to support the grommets. And oh, you're right, that means it's grommet time. Grommet time. Oh look, you can see my forehead for once. You know the drill. Kira, that's not a drill, that's a hammer. Shut up! We mark the placement, we absolutely shred through that fabric with our awl, and we spend entirely too long trying to get our grommets in there because canvas is hard to cut through. I guess that kind of contradicts what I said before. Okay, and with that, this project is finally done. It only took, you know, my entire life, but I'm actually like really satisfied with it. There's plenty of messiness around the edges and like mistakes here and there but overall especially on the bodice i feel like we did level up a little bit this week so i'm at least happy with that anyways you guys are going to finally see what this looks like on now and me too because i haven't tried it on yet in the reveal <laughs> so much for watching. I absolutely adore how this came out. It has its flaws, but I'm overall just very happy. Now I just have to figure out somewhere to wear this because I don't leave my house. <laughs> Thank you so much for setting your eyeballs on my video today. But as always, the largest, most tree-sized of thank yous goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Eldlin, my deepest apologies. Zyle S. Shay Lee. Sable Skies. The Cat's Bark. Alouin Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Cleos, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, Sushi McNushi, Satoni, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Panda Pie 365, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. I do not trust her, but let's try to cut this out. Come here. Come here.